Hello everyone. Hope all of you are doing well and taking good care of yourself and your families. This is a very difficult situation we are all in and we need to transfer positive energy to each and every one to stay calm and stay healthy. So uh, now we have gone to a totally different way of interaction. I would have loved sitting among you all and interacting directly but as situation demands I am meeting you all on a virtual platform. So today uh, let me share with you some of my thoughts some of my observations on the technical education scenario as well as you can see the placement and job opportunities scenario post-COVID. Now when I say post-COVID also it's very difficult to say when exactly we can say it is post-COVID. I mean how many years will be under this crisis we are not aware as yet. But anyway, uh, if you recall the technical education in just a couple of months, months back, well, we were having our regular classes, out of these almost more than 95% were real contact hours, theoretical classes in the classroom, and of course practicals in the laboratories and workshops project works in the laboratories and workshops and only about less than 5% were uh, you know sort of digital uh, uh, you know knowledge data in the form of videos maybe uh, during the last one year of course some students had the option of uh, taking courses offered uh, through Swayam platform or also some NPTEL courses were included in the uh, in the syllabi but overall it was a situation of direct contact face-to-face -face contact between teachers and students and it was really a sort of a direct uh, learning teaching uh, technique then you know all of a sudden we face this crisis. I still recall the first uh, message from our Honorable Prime Minister Modi ji. He announced the lockdown and we had hardly a few hours to react. So initially uh, all universities, all higher education institutions, they where this sort of got a shock actually. We were not really prepared for this. But of course, it took just maybe a few days or hardly a week to get out of that shock and act, you know, sort of very proactive, uh, you know, action. And immediately, most of the higher education institutions started giving online classes. And uh, this was possible because the platforms were already there. Every institute had gradually started online courses, few online courses at least. So they had the platform ready. And of course, I have to admit, uh, you people, young people, the students particularly, they are very smart. They are very, very tech savvy. So, you know, just going directly to an online platform, it was not difficult to get them on board. And uh, it went quite well, the theoretical classes. But the problem was with the practical classes, so how to go about that. And uh, we had a lot of discussions, you know, a lot of brainstorming, and again, all these virtually, okay? So people started using uh, Zoom app and you know we were using WhatsApp, we were using Google platforms, Webex, so many different platforms to have these online meetings. 
and uh, well, it was not easy thinking about how to handle the practical classes. So uh, many engineering colleges, universities, they decided to, you know, uh, uh, make uh, videos on the practicals. Look out for already available videos on YouTube, sharing them with the students, providing them with already existing data so that they can uh, at least work on the analysis part. Well, somehow all the universities are progressing with uh, the courses uh, and targeting to end everything by maybe end of May and uh, exams sometime in July. And when I say exams, then again that's another uh, big uh, challenge that came up for all the uh, technical and education institutions. Uh, all are wondering how to carry out the examinations as it has to be online. Uh, so a lot of thought going in the IT sales of almost all the universities were working like anything, you know, trying to develop the platform for the examinations. And uh, most uh, possible option that could uh, really possibly take place is uh, examinations based on MCQs or multiple choice questions. There again, courses that are very very theoretical that again is a challenge how to prepare the MCQs uh, but uh, well sort of everybody geared up and things are almost ready and uh, this sort of became like an experimental uh, phase for all the universities to uh, conduct online examinations but to address the non-availability of sophisticated facilities in all the engineering colleges, the Indian Institute of Technology at Madras had come up with a virtual lab which had many, many different areas of uh, many, many different labs in various branches of engineering are already available. And uh, Apart from that, some other universities have also tried to come up with their own virtual labs. And at this crucial time of the COVID pandemic, these virtual labs actually proved to be very, very useful. And uh, IIT Madras was kind enough to give it out for free to most of the students. And uh, this has now uh, become a a challenge now for almost all the universities and higher education institutes in India to develop different uh, platforms for virtual labs. Let's now move over to the placements in for universities like us. This is a very difficult situation because when the lockdown was announced it totally stopped our placement activities. You may be well aware that uh, most of the placement activities they happen in between uh, January and April and uh, the process had just started in our university and uh, a few companies came in few of our students got selected for uh, and given job offers and this has happened almost all over India then all of a sudden the announcement of the lockdown and so many companies which were in the queue they decided obviously they couldn't come and our students also had to uh, leave for their homes so uh, this is very very depressing when uh, you know things were looking up and all your students getting ready for being placed and all of a sudden it comes to a standstill and uh, 
when you read uh, headlines like these, you know, that 100 million uh, and more jobs are at risk after COVID-19. And our, uh, there, are, uh, there are headlines like campus placements left in a large offers delayed, offers cancel. Yeah, this type of uh, news uh, may be true, but they really, uh, uh, you know, they really uh, give a very negative energy to the ecosystem. And uh, you know, students immediately they, they get depressed, and they feel that you know, there's what can we do now? There's nothing that can be done. Okay, uh, I'll come to that. But not all the companies have thought similarly. So there are many companies that actually decided to honor the the offers that they given to students. Uh, there were like uh, MNCs like Capgemini. Then there are Wipro, Tata Consultancy Services, Google. So these companies have decided to go ahead with the placement. They said, no, we will not dishonor the offers that we had given. And uh, similarly, uh, the MCCZ companies, uh, you know what are MCCZ companies, right? FMCZ, that used to call it, fast um, moving consumer goods companies. Uh, companies like Godrez, Pepsi, Hindustan, Unilever, Biocon, you no, know, these companies have actually decided to go ahead uh, with uh, the placements, you know, the, the, that means honor the appointments they had given out. Let's look at the jobs situation in just one single month, the month of April. You won't believe it. In India itself, over 27 million youngsters in their 20s, that is less than 30, have lost their jobs in April. 27 million. And uh, this is directly from the mouth of Mr. Mahesh Vyas, you know, who is the CEO of the, uh, it's called CMI, the Center for Monitoring Indian Economy. Uh, now Mr. Vyas said that, you know, he, was, he wrote that it's so it's a matter of concern because it is during this age that means below 30 that young India builds its career in the hope of a bright future for the country 33 million men and women in the 30s lost their jobs in April 33 million and out of those 86 person are men now this is something very alarming but this has set experts intellectuals the government thinking as to how possibly these people who had lost their jobs now can start earning and how soon can they do it Personally, I don't feel that this phase from a sudden, you know, uh, uh, change in the way uh, things are happening, the way people were maintaining their lifestyle, the way in the individuals, you know, uh, work, the consumers their needs, everything abruptly changed and uh, companies were not in a position to quickly change over and you know still keep providing the salary that they have to to those people but it will be a case of survival of the fittest and uh, these companies will be needing people again very soon. Now to get yourself employed again, you really need to prove that you are employable. Now that's the sad thing here. In India, unfortunately, even after many degrees, BTEC, MTech, PhD, 
many of our young people are not employable simply because they do not possess those soft skills or those extra skills that are needed to keep them you know competing in a in a job scenario so very soon what i foresee is that companies will not ask you what degrees you have are you a btech in civil engineering or are you a mtech in uh, mechanical engineering chemical engineering they will ask you do you know this do you know that are you comfortable with programming will you be able to develop apps these are the questions you will be asked and if you say yes i am comfortable with that to hell with your degrees you will even want to know what degree you possess and that's why this will bring a huge transformation in the education system like i already mentioned that so many universities are offering courses it's not like a full btech program they're saying we are offering a certificate course in some mechatronics we are offering a certificate course in uh, artificial intelligence in data mining so it's just one specific topic of interest and you get a certification for that and that too from top schools in the world so very soon you will be able to tailor the courses that you are going to take based on the path that you choose for your career so it's all about understanding the needs of the employers and acquiring those skills to make yourself employable so if you uh, remember the last uh, message again from uh, our honorable prime minister when you we mentioned about the new you know economic package that means a 20 lakh crore special economic package uh, to basically revive the economy which is battered by uh, the corona pandemic now that's roughly about 10 percent of india's gdp and what are the areas being targeted well the idea of this special uh, economic package is to help farmers number one then of course uh, those people workers who have lost their jobs and then you can say honest taxpayers you know other citation honest taxpayers then of course the micro small and medium enterprises and cottage industries under the ministry of uh, that falls under the ministry of uh, msme so you see uh, the government has already started thinking that these people who actually lost their jobs can they actually come up with their own ventures because they have the skills so uh, maybe come up with very soft loans no? you have soft loans without interest and uh, try to make a few people come together to build up a uh, small enterprise so these options are there like i told you it's up to these people who have lost their jobs to take it up as a challenge rather than you know brooding over what happened and i had such a decent job and i lost it but you can't blame anybody right it's it's, it's a pandemic that had come over and these are unexpected so after this if you cannot get yourself place if you cannot earn your own living then there's nobody else to blame but yourself a couple of months maybe about a year of hardship but after that or during this process if you are constantly trying to take uh, account of the situation take advantages of the schemes given up by the government uh, i personally feel that there is definitely a silver line. it is very depressing to see that almost 60 to 65 percent of uh, all the interviews for students that have been lined up have all been cancelled 
even in uh, very top institutes like uh, the Indian Institute of Management and uh, Management Development Institute and also in top engineering institute like the IITs. A leading US based consultancy company they uh, cancelled the appointment offers that they had given to 11 students from uh, IIT uh, Delhi, IIT Chennai and uh, IIT Kanpur uh, together with another six cancellations for the Indian Institute of Management in Kolkata. Now these are top institutes you know, uh, generating high quality products and even these have uh, you know, their appointments have been cancelled. Uh, there was this interesting tweet I read uh, from uh, Professor uh, V. Ram Gopal Rao, the director of uh, the Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. Uh, I just want to quote one sentence from his tweet. Uh, it's a, he wrote something like this, uh, specifically uh, this tweet was to those companies that had actually uh, decided to cancel the appointments of the students. and. Uh, Professor Rao wrote that these students are capable of getting you out of recession faster than you can imagine. So companies are in a, in a dilemma as to whether to go for fresh recruitments or not, whether to lay off people. Everything has become so unpredictive and if you observe the statistical analysis related to COVID-19, you'll see that nothing is following any statistical rule, any statistical law. Uh, as per some statisticians, uh, the number of corona cases in India towards the first half of uh, May should have been some 3.5 five lakhs which is not which didn't really happen so it's getting very difficult to actually uh, predict uh, what might happen and uh, the way to go is that we have to leave with COVID that that is a fact and COVID will be there for quite some time until the antivirus at least comes up and tested so uh, we have to leave with uh, corona and uh, so it is up to us now how to adapt to this changing scenario how to make us capable to uh, meet these challenges and uh, uh, the point that I want to make here is that see people are saying you know so many people will lose jobs because of course uh, companies that have hired these people the way they are functioning, the products they were uh, giving out, the services they were rendering, all of a sudden the need for those products and services has shot down layers because of the corona crisis and they of course cannot pay the salaries unless they earn, right? So it is very important and that's why they have to switch over. Uh, I don't know if you people, uh, I know many will not know but when we were very young like you people at that time we didn't have cell phones, okay? Believe it or not, we really didn't have cell phones, forget about smartphones. And uh, at the time when we used to make calls, be it international calls or sometimes even local calls, we used to go to these small, small outlets called PCOs, public call offices, okay, to make the phone calls. Then all of a sudden, the cell phones came and everybody had phones in their hands and would go to the PCOs. Nobody, right? So the PC owners lost their business and they had to all close down. But does that mean that's the end of the world for them? Definitely not. So they have to immediately look out for the next possible option which can bring them dividends, right? So the same thing here. So you cannot be happy saying that I am a mechanical engineer, I am a, a chemical engineer, I am an electrical engineer and be happy saying that I am so, I am, I am that. 
So and then you say start looking for jobs which may not be there for you. So it's not about telling I'm a mechanical engineer, it's telling what I know, what are the what skills I have that is more important now. It's your skills that will take you there and the skills you have to develop. So finally let me summarize whatever I was talking about in a few uh, bullet points. Uh, okay, let me first load my cartridge and this is the first bullet. Huge transformation in uh, the education system post COVID-19. Online courses and virtual labs will gain prominence. Bullet number two, students will get an option to customize their study program. Bullet number three, many young people jobless. Bullet number four, new opportunities will emerge for livelihood. Work from home will gain prominence. Bullet number five. COVID-19 crisis will be a catalyst to unprecedented changes in every industry. Bullet number six. Factors leading to industry uh, transformation will include agility, that is uh, in planning and uh, execution, then digital transformation in uh, production services, and of course the work from home culture which will affect people and process. Okay, bullet number seven. Uh, sectors that will boom post COVID-19. Well, uh, first of all, digital payments, cloud computing, uh, then uh, direct to consumer streaming, you know, services like that. Then, uh, of course, uh, you will have content libraries. This will definitely, uh, uh, you know, boost up with the 5G support, right? And uh, then, of course, we have healthcare, cyber security, uh, e commerce, and of course, online education is going to get a huge boost. Insurance, logistics, robotics, okay, so these are areas that will get a boom. So, for those seeking placements, you know how to acquire those skill sets that are necessary for these sectors. And uh, the last bullet point, okay, the last bullet I'm throwing at you, it's very, very important, and that is change is inevitable. This change keeps on happening. And to survive in the ever-changing environment, you have to learn to change yourself. So that's the takeaway. And uh, hope uh, I could provide you some insight. I did share my thoughts and opinions. And hopefully this will be helpful to you. Wishing you all the best once again. Take care of yourself and your family. Stay safe. God bless you all.